This video that you're about to watch is a brief training on how to download and use the web client as well as your cell phone on your new 3CX system. We're going to go ahead and get started with how to download the actual web application. And the way that you do that is you will have received an email that provides a link to the web application. Prior to clicking on this link, we want you to copy and paste the password so that when you do click on the link and this window appears, you'll be able to type your extension number and then paste the password that you just copied. Once you've done that and you've clicked on the login, it's going to bring up the home screen, so to speak, of the web application. The first feature that I want to show you is the dialer feature. And the reason I want to show you that is I want you to be able to pick what audio you want to use for your phone calls when using the web application in combination with a device, or if you're using the web application just by itself for making and receiving calls. So you're going to click on the dialer, which is this little handset. This keypad will appear. You're going to click on the pull down right here underneath the enter name or number. And that's going to give you what options you have for your audio. For example, if you have a handset, it will show you the handset. If you want to use the browser or you want to use your computer for the audio, you would click the browser. If you want to use your cell phone, you would click the smartphone. So once you've made your selection as to where your audio is going to come from, you're going to go ahead and close this application. Just for kicks, I'm going to show you that from the dialer, you can actually place a call. So let's say I want to call someone internally. And I hit the little green dial button. Both my handset will start to ring. And as I answer it, the party that I've called, their phone will start to ring. When we're done talking and we hang up, the call is disconnected. Now you obviously can pick up your handset and place that same call by dialing on the handset. Again, once they've answered, the two of you can talk. But you can also see that that little window of the keypad is now appeared. I'm going to go ahead and hang up. And that's how you would use the dialer. The next feature that I want to show you is how to manage your status. Again, on the application here in the left-hand corner, you'll see a little icon of a person. You'll click on that. Your name and extension number will appear and the status that you wish to be in will be available to you. So you can avoid distractions by setting your own status to let others know when you're away or you don't want to be disturbed. So for example, if I touch the do not disturb, anyone else using their application will see it that you're in a do not disturb mode. If I want to turn it off, I go back up to this little icon and I click the available button and now I'm available for a call. If someone is on a call, you can actually see that the user is on a call. They're not on a call, they're available. The next view I want to go over is the people. This icon here on the left hand side is where you can use, we'll call it your home screen if you will, but this view here will show you all the members of any groups that you're in, as well as all of the people within the business that either use a phone or the web application, their extension number and their statuses. If having everyone on your screen becomes too cumbersome, you can add what we call favorites. You would do that by over here on the right-hand side where it says all groups, 
You can use the pull down menu and you can create favorites by adding people into this group and just having this for a visual display. So right now you can see that I have four of my peers in my favorites. If I wanna add additional people to my favorites, I would go back to the all tab. I would click on the person that I wanna to add to my favorites by going over, for example, to Nikki, and I hit the star to highlight the star. You'll see right now who are my, in my favorites now, and I can add the extra people to my favorites. So now again, if I go back into my favorites group, I can see not only the original four that I had, but now I have some other people. If I wanna delete someone from my favorites, all I simply have to do is turn off, if you will, their little star, and they're no longer in my favorites group. I'm gonna go back to the all group. So that's your people view. The next icon I wanna review with you is the chat icon. The chat icon allows you to instant message between yourself and your peers or your colleagues. You can either do what we call a live chat, which is talking to them real time, or not talking, but instant messaging them real time. Or if you send them a chat, they'll see it when they're back online. How do I chat with someone? There's one of two ways to do it. If I go back to the people tab, and I wanna chat with someone. I can go over to their name and I can use this icon and it'll bring me to this screen for me to chat with them. Or I could have started out in the chat icon. I could have gone up here to the add button, clicked start a chat, and then found their extension number here by either typing their name or looking for them, selecting them, and doing a chat that way. And again, it opens up basically the same screen and I can do the same thing. Once I've had a chat going with someone and I no longer need to keep it, and I don't wanna keep the history of the chat, I can simply go over to the extension here and under these three dots, click on it and delete the chat. Again, I can take this one, go over to the three dots and delete the chat. If there's a chat that you wanna save for any reason, you can do what we call archiving the chat. And by doing that, what you're doing is, let, let's take this one for an example. I wanna archive this chat because there was something in it. There was a link in it. There was something important that I want to remember so that I can go back to this chat to get the information. So I've archived it. Now at any point, I'm off doing whatever. And I want to go back to that particular archived chat. What I would do is come into the chat icon, go over to the, the, the tab here that says recent, hit the pull down, and this time I'm going to hit archived. There's the chat that I chose to archive. And here's the history of the chat. I can take this chat and I can unarchive it. And what will happen is I'm going to switch from archived to recent. And now she's back up here. The chat's been moved or I could just simply have looked at it and pulled off whatever information I want. Another nice feature about the chat is that you can build what we call group chats. Group chats are instant messaging between yourself and other people. You either can be part of one that someone else has created or you can create your own. In this instance, you'll see that we have a couple of group chats going as well as I have a couple of individual chats, but these are my group chats. When you see more than one people icon, you know that that's a group chat. A group chat, if you wanted to look at it, you've got a chat going here. 
you want to see who's in this chat by just clicking on this group here, a window will open on the right hand side and it'll show you the people that are in the chat. I can close this chat by just simply clicking this. If I want to create a group chat, I would go to my add command. This time I would do a create. I would select the people that I want. I'd click the next button. I would name the chat. And I could start a chat. If I forgot who was in the group, again, I can just click on the people icon and it shows me who's in it. The two people I chose plus myself. But I could start a chat that way. No longer need this chat. Just go ahead and delete it. The next icon I want to show you is our meet icon, which is also our conference icon. I'll be showing you how to set up quick call, audio, and video. So we'll get started by using setting up a quick call. While I'm doing this training, I'm going to leave my camera off, but obviously you could keep your camera on. I'm going to click the join now should be preparing an email that I can send out to my users. There's the invite. I'll email it to the participants. And when I do, they'll actually receive the invite with a link. They'll click on the link and they will join my call. So now I'm on a call with them. And if we both had our cameras on, we could obviously see each other. We have our audio, we can talk to each other, we can communicate. What's nice about using this type of a conference call is I can share a screen if I wanna show them either a document or I wanna share my screen overall. I can also record the call if I wanted to record the call. Once I click the record button from that point out until the meeting is ended, I'm recording the actual call. A copy of the recording will go into my email at the end of my call. I can chat back and forth with the, with the people that are on the call. Okay. Again, once I'm all done, I would click the end meeting leave the meeting and I'm done. The next type of meeting that I want to show you is I want to show you a meeting with just audio that's scheduled for the future. So I'm going to click on the meet, click on the add, and I'm going to do an audio and I'll schedule it for later. Populate the date, the time, and how long the meeting's anticipated to be lasting put in my subject, any notes to my participant. Then, because I'm doing this as an audio, I'm given the option to enable announcements. I'm gonna click on enable announcement. And the reason I'm doing that is as my participants call into this conference, they will be requested to record their name. So then I will have some sort of some form of attendees that I can use to make sure that everybody I've invited is obviously on the um, call. The next thing I'll do is I'll go down to my email calendar to add to. I'll do the pull down here and tell you that obviously you can use Google. Microsoft 365, Outlook Online, Desktop, or even Legacy. The only problem with using email legacy is that the users receiving the invites will not have the ability to RSVP back that they're attending the meeting. So for the most part, I usually use the Desktop Outlook. I'll click on Create a Meeting. Over here in the left-hand corner, I'll open up this window and it's going to open up what's my outlook 
for me to finish this invite and get it sent out to the invitees. So I'll put the people in that I'm inviting. It's already got the schedule date and time for the call. It has the information for them to join. I can, if I want to put an attachment on this, if it's necessary for the meeting. However, I want to finish up this invite before I hit the send button. Once I hit the send button, the participants will receive the invite. And then on the day that we have the meeting scheduled for, they'll be able to call in and join. So that's setting up just an audio only. The next type of meeting I want to set up, again, I'll go back to the meet. I'll go to the add. And I want to set up a video. A video later, same concept, set up the date, the time, etc. Add my subject. Do any kind of notes to participants. Go ahead and create the meeting. Click on it. And the same thing again. Once it opens up in my calendar, I can finish off the invite by adding any attachments that I want. I can add the people that I want to participate in this meeting and then send it out. I'm going to go ahead and close this here. This is my invite. Again, the same type of thing. I'll go ahead and I'll put who I want to invite. Here's the information for them to join the meeting. Again, add attachments if necessary, et cetera. When I'm all done, I would send it. It'll go to them and they'll be able to RSVP that they're in attendance. I'm coming back here now to the meet. And I want to show you, these are my scheduled conferences. If I wanted to add, I use the add command and these are the ones that are scheduled. Next icon I want to cover with you is the calls icon. The calls icon is just like the history button on your phone. When you use it, you have the ability to see the different calls that have either been made or received. By using this pull down, you can see all the calls. You can see your incoming, your outgoing, and your missed. On any one of these, you can call the person back. Or if it happens to be an internal person, you can even chat with them. So the calls is just like the history button on your phone. The next icon is your panel icon. That will be used for people that belong to a queue, such as sales or service. When a call comes in, it distributes calls to agents, depending on what status they are in the queue. This panel will be discussed with you on an individual basis if in fact you are part of a queue in your new phone system.